port on my computer, which... Here's the cl cloud return to Monkey. See what happens with those episodes and why it asked me a different question. Maybe I should always record on the cloud. What if we became Skyriders? <laughs> Riding on clouds? I'm here for it. Getting our pilot's license, putting Hell weird yeah. flares on our planes, scaring the rubes. Absolutely. I mean, rubes. you only have to take like 50 hours of uh, pilot training, I think. My God. Could you imagine not crashing it's your not plane locked. and dying in those 50 hours? Yeah. yeah that Eric would... Henderson is a pilot. Is he? Is that where he's been? The sky? Yeah. <laughs> no, he's not. He's just a... He has a pilot's license. Wow. Yeah, but what do you do with that? I would be flying. I'd be taking Fucking weird people everywhere. I'd be meeting a lot more cartel riding members. Shit. <laughs> I'd be over yeah. the forest every day, screaming I, for Bigfoot. I would just be drawing dicks. And I think we can <laughs> we can all agree that we probably all would. That's the funniest thing you can Jordan, put in the sky. your flight pattern uh, here <laughs> is. I know. I know. <laughs> It's pretty good, right? <laughs> it's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You guys, is that what you guys called me in for? Just to tell me it's pretty good. And to shake your hand. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Janet in the chat says, uh, but like monster dicks with prongs and bolts. <laughs> <laughs> bolts. <laughs> Folks, welcome to Werewolf Radar, the world's <laughs> premier. Paranormal Preparedness Podcast. My name is Jordan Dahl. I am Nate Balding. I am Rohair Norquist. Today's episode of <laughs> Werewolf Radar is brought to you by Mountain Wizard, a brand new soft drink from Monstroco with a taste so terrifyingly familiar, you'll enter a fugue state. What is that? Tangerine? Melon? The taste of the smell of the grass on the morning of the slayings? Don't worry about that now. It's too late. You've ingested it. That's why your pupils are doing that. Mountain <laughs> Wizard from Monstroco. It'll put a skull in your ass. I like it. I'm not going to lie. I'm scared of it, but I like it. You know, they do. They in this advertisement, they make it seem like. Drinking it would be a bad idea. If you don't want a wizard skull in your ass, that's what if you already have a skull well, in your ass? The thing is, you don't know if you're getting a wizard skull. Oh, yeah, it I might just be a assume. regular any skull, just some fucking bozo's skull, you know? Yeah, they don't guarantee the wizard skull. And if you do get the wizard skull, you are going to know it. That wizard will be <laughs> screaming, screaming axes. <laughs> Wait, this time, is like a... every time you open your butt. <laughs> blast this out. is like a, a top brand uh, card reveal. Like, yes. You don't know what you're getting. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you could get a regular ass skull or you could get one of those shiny foil skulls that some people sometimes get. Hey, also, extra four. Also, it definitely it seems to it seems to affect your brain and your pupils. There's a lot to worry about here. The can is heavier than you would think from looking at it, but it's also like not hot. It's definitely cold, but it like hurts. Extra cold. Yeah. Liquid nitrogen cold. Yeah. Mountain Wizard from Monstroco. Don't drink it. <laughs> uh, fellas, I've got a really weird one that I would like to uh, jump right out of the gate here. Yeah, Here's the skull. Left. It's out of the box. There you go. This, thank you so much. Uh, I'll give it a gentle kiss on the forehead. Ow. And now I will begin my segment that I'm calling uh, Give Me a Hand. Wait, don't. Uh, I'll work on it. Um, so <laughs> basically, I read a lot of uh, kind of firsthand ghost stories in my spare time. It's when I'm when I'm going to sleep, I kind of 
I cruise the internet looking for ghosts. It's the right time for it. <laughs> I know, right? We're going to be getting a lot of thunder here, by the way, because uh, because of what you're doing, open because of because I'm about to reveal the secrets. <laughs> um, oh God, there it is. Uh, so I uh, what I keep seeing a motif popping up again and again. And it's a story that I've heard from friends in in real life. Um, it's a story that I see on these Reddit forums of people being like, what did I see? And it is it's, uh, r truly slash chilling. Chandler. Uh, <laughs> could I be any more frightened? Um, it is the disembodied hand. People quite often report seeing a hand in uh, in when they're in kind of in between dreams, when they wake up to hear something in the room, you know, people will see what is described as uh, a, 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 a ghostly white or sometimes green or sometimes fully monstrous hand like reaching out of the wall toward them. Um, Ken in the chat just said the hands in my childhood bedroom doorway. If you don't People, remember that story, a recent episode, check out that g- yeah. listener ep- ghost story. It's really terrifying. And uh, I've kind of done a little compilation here of some of the some of the spookier disembodied hand stories, because uh, I want to get you guys thoughts on it. So these are these are pretty much all from Reddit, which is uh, the capital of the Internet. Um. So this is from our paranormal. It was posted by Bandru Ro- Bandrui Rose four years ago. Uh, I've been contemplating whether or not to post about this for months, as I know it is a crazy concept, and I know there are some people who might think I'm completely insane. Even I still have no clue what actually happened here. I have had countless paranormal experiences in my life, but this is by far the most intense one I've ever had. I was a teenager, around 17 years old. This happened one Saturday afternoon when I was alone at home. Back then, I did belly dancing and would have practice for shows on Saturday mornings. On this particular Saturday, my mom dropped me off at home afterward and went off to run errands. I was excited to be alone as it was an opportunity to sneak a call on the home phone. Back then, I was almost never allowed to use the home phone to make calls as it was costly. So I took the phone into my room. I called this guy I had been chatting to back then. Conversation was going well, and I was laughing and chatting away, and I had my belly dance hip scarf in my hand and was absentmindedly swinging it about. It was the type that has metal coins on it, so it was making a jingling sound as I swung it. Now, what I'm about to say is totally bizarre, and I'm well aware of that, but this is 100% what I saw and what happened to me on that day. I saw a hand that appeared out of nowhere next to me, bashed my bed a total of three times. This happened so fast, I barely had any time to register what was happening. Obviously, I freaked out. I screamed and jumped up off my bed and out of my room so fast that it must have completed the entire movement in no more than two steps. My friend on the other end of the phone was frantically asking me what was wrong and what happened, but I was in so much shock I could not even speak a full sentence coherently. Probably took me about five minutes to be able to speak enough to explain what had happened, and I was crying at this point. I would not go back into my room. My friend was so convinced that someone had broken into my house as he had heard the sound of the three bangs on my bed that he wanted to drive over to my house. He kept on asking me if I was sure there was no one in my room and maybe they'd been hiding under my bed or something. I kept on explaining to him that I'd seen the hand and that it had no body attached to it. <clears throat> it had just been a hand. If there was a whole person in my house, I would have seen the rest of them. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> and they wouldn't have vanished into thin air. He was still not 100% convinced and asked me to leave the house until my mom got back. The only reason he did think I was insane and he truly believed that I had been in some sort of, Oh wait, the only reason he didn't think that I was insane and he truly believed that I'd been in some sort of danger was because he'd actually heard the bangs. So uh, there's, there's more to this, um, but it's mainly just them trying to kind of uh, parse what happened to them. Uh, that is the first story. We're going to move on because um, a lot of these have really great stories in the chats uh, or in the responses. Here's a response. I've also seen a disembodied hand appear on the side of my bed, which is against the wall. But it had an old hand puppet that kind of looked like the Little Red Riding Hood. That didn't move. 
the worst. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nobody except another child would even be able to fit under the bed. It didn't. I didn't look underneath, though. Smart move. When I was pregnant with my son, I had a lucid dream that a disembodied hand was climbing up my bed and patted my belly. I've always attracted the paranormal, especially in my sleep, so it wasn't abnormal for me to have lucid dreams, shadow people, etc. But this was different. The hand was solid. I felt it on my belly. I felt it wanted to connect to my son. I had a panic attack in my sleep that became so bad my husband woke me up saying I was grinding my teeth and screaming with a closed mouth. Nice. After we hey. moved out of my parents, hey, maybe uh, <laughs> I, I'm not going to take you, but uh, <laughs> this one when you had it, I'm getting that one. I want this. That's one. that's what I fear it is. But I also hope it was just like a ghost, very much just into motherhood. You know, yeah. like really respectful of the mother, going like you have a treasure in here. And it's going to be this, mine when it's born. I think in this realm of like emotion and thought you need to trust your gut more than ever and this woman did not feel good about it okay fair uh, after we moved out of my parents maybe a month later a you man was taking a serial killer a man was taking pictures of the outside of the house uh parents were thinking of selling and he said he kept seeing a girl in the basement windows and couldn't find her on any of the photos he took, my then two-year-old told me that he used to see someone stand in the doorway of that room watching us sleep. Ugh. Very scary. We're going to move on. Yeah, here. Very creepy. Yeah. Uh, like when he was using the restroom, there was just a girl watching his parents sleep. He'd be like, oh, sorry. Didn't mean yep. to oh, come in yep. and ruin anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so I had this experience when I was around. This is by Birdman Dodd two years ago. So I had this experience when I was roughly around eight, maybe 10. So I'd grown up on horror movies, but I was really well grounded. and was pretty logical at that age as I didn't believe in monsters, but was curious about ghosts, etc. cetera. Um, I wasn't prone to just making stuff up or believing in the super fantastic. I had always believed there was a scientific reason or at least something I could figure out. So this was one of my first real paranormal experiences before they kicked in to higher gear later in life. So my story, I'm downstairs watching TV on the couch and the couch is directly against the wall, tight, less than two inches. It's dark. I'm watching the TV show and the show has bright colors. So there's good ambient light in the basement. My mom calls me for dinner and I get up from the couch and feel something behind me. I turn my head around and can't believe what I'm seeing. This white gloved hand was reaching out from behind the couch for me. Several things ran through my head at that moment. One, this can't be real. Two, there is no way for someone to be back there. Three, fuck, run. <laughs> <laughs> I whip my head back and turn my body. And just as my legs start to move and momentum carries me forward, I feel something just ever so light grab at the air behind me. I could feel the malicious intent coming off whatever the hell it was. I knew that if I was grabbed, that it was something I'd never escape. Pretty spooky. Oh, that's oh, yeah. fucking terrifying. Here's another one. This is called My Partner and I Saw the Same Disembodied Hand. This is two people seeing it. This is from OK Sun, posted about 10 months ago. My partner and I were an, in an online relationship for the first six and a half months of our relationship. COVID. Uh, I used to nanny for my dad and sister. And one night after the kids had gone to bed, I called my partner as I usually did so that I could feel safe when I went to bed, since it was only me and the kids at the time. My bedroom door was open and facing the door was a banister to the top of the stairs and the other bedroom was across the hall. I had the light on in the hallway since it was only midnight and I wanted to stay up a bit. I suddenly had an odd feeling as I usually did in that home and looked at the banister and saw a dark hand slowly slide behind the wall. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Fast, like forward, fast forward a couple of weeks, maybe a month later, and me and my partner finally meet. <laughs> all right, this is where it gets pretty blue. I uh, know I'm kidding. <laughs> a couple of days go by and all is well. But while one licking night, their face, I looked behind the banister. <laughs> I looked he's, down. Someone was jerking he's, me he's off. He's putting something beside the ban banister, uh, if you catch my meaning. One night we went downstairs to hang out and the oven was on. I hadn't used the stove that day and it was just us and the kids. The only thing we could think of is that the oldest had accidentally turned it on either that night or the next night. 
uh, or a few nights later, my partner had gone downstairs to get something to drink. The kids were in bed and I was upstairs waiting for him to come back. And when he did, he told me he'd seen a hand that had a, quote, wood like texture to it. And this is kind of uh something that we that we see in this phenomenon is a lot of the time it'll be like coming out of a wall or something and it'll have the texture of that right of that material of that substrate um very funny comedian out of denver i i'm sure he wouldn't mind us sharing this story because i think he told it to us one time maybe here on the show zach moss go check him out has a great story about living in a uh, a pretty haunted room and he woke up one night and he saw a hand reaching for him over his nightstand uh reminds me of that he said mm-hmm. that it looked like looked like the wall um, anyway, wood like hand with texture to it that had disappeared around the corner toward the youngest's room slash toy room. We b- both went downstairs and couldn't find anything. And we found to see if we could find anything. And we found nothing. Um, yeah, that's about it for that story. They have uh, they have um, some some people come and uh, jump in to see to tell their stories here's another one uh i remember there was a house in my childhood neighborhood that had a reputation for being haunted my uncle saw an apparition there once and others had experiences as well before i knew any of this i remember walking my dog past it and hearing this loud knocking sound from above me i looked up and in the highest attic window of this completely dark house there were these two massive white hands bigger than any human hands tapping on the glass and waving. I ran all the way home. I talked to the homeowner and his kids, and apparently the attic has been blocked off for years. That gave me full goosebumps. The waving, the like, hey, hello. Yeah, Yeah. scary. Um, This is a thing about disembodied, uh, disembodied, limbs and torsos being part of a larger haunting this person says i heard a story where i saw i had a story where i saw an arm coming out from under my bed but not a floating hand hmm. interesting okay we're gonna move on this thread there's is, a bunch uh, of tales uh janet in the in the chat dropped a link for uh la mano yes. paluda uh, but we're literally going to talk about La Mano oh, Paluda well, right that, now. That worked out. Sorry. Uh, this is from um, Confident Rutabag at 23. This was posted one year ago. They say, I really don't share this story for several reasons. One is obviously been, being seen as an unhinged liar. <laughs> sure. That's everyone's fear. <laughs> rightfully so. Funny. The other probably stronger reason is I'm afraid that it will come after me. In Mexican folklore, there's a story of a disembodied hairy hand that will tickle misbehaving children who don't go to sleep when they're told to. Essentially, it's a boogeyman. Do what parents say, monster. There's probably several variations, but this is what I grew up with. When I was three, I was sleeping on the bottom bunk and awoke to something tapping my right hand. There were two large drawers where my sister and I keep all of our toys beneath the bed. Whatever was tapping me was coming from the drawer under me. Before I opened my eyes, I just felt this frantic or enthusiastic tapping on my hand. I remember the slapping sound, too. My parents would leave the hallway light on to help my sister and I sleep comfortably. So I saw what was waking me up viscerally. I opened my eyes and saw this large hand curved up from beneath my bottom bunk, slapping my hand. Imagine man hands from Seinfeld. (laughs) It was green, like the color of pea soup. It had black hair on the back of its hand that traveled up its fingers. The fingernails were also green, though short. Maybe it got a mani before visiting me. Okay. This is (laughs) confident rutabagger. You're you're doing a great job here. Uh, Its skin was really dry. I distinctly remember how coarse the skin felt. When I started moving my hand, it almost looked like it was signing to me. It looked like it was signing Y in ASL. I have no idea 
what that would even translate to in dismembered hand language, but I remember it moving its fingers and hand like it was trying to tell me something. I squealed, well, shut except my you eyes. Do know what it would translate to? Uh, <laughs> Why in ASL? Yeah, well, but I mean in dismembered hand language. Right, right. That's a different. Oh, yeah, that's okay. that's D H. It's 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 the same but different. You know, D H L, the moving company, brought to you by disembodied hands. Um, Move Stroko. <laughs> we went somewhere else. <laughs> That's the next one. Uh, I started screaming frantically for my parents and could hear my sister shifting above me. Both my parents ran in and I'm obviously inconsolable. My dad told me it was just him teasing me. And then my memory of the rest of the night stops there. The next morning at breakfast, I was eating pancakes with my family. I asked my dad, I asked why my dad was playing a prank on me and tapping my hand from under the bed. My parents tensely looked at each other and changed the subject. Ooh, Pretty that's, spooky. That's always fun as a child. Yeah. What's wild to me is that my cousin, wait, listen to this. For years as a kid, I thought I saw it a couple of times and that it would run around with other hands, pure black, pure white. What? Those might have been I, nightmares. I started dreaming then about being tickled and suffocated by several hands and feet. It sounds almost comical, but fuck, it was terrifying. What's wild to me is that my cousin, who was the same age as me, also experienced a severed green hand chasing her up the basement steps until the shut until she shut the door on it. Oh, I hate that. I had that fear growing up at my grandma's house, but of a no. Yeah, yeah, that's a healthy fear. Um, also, I have a friend who, without knowing anything about my experience, told me his cousin saw a green dismembered hand try and coax her into the bedroom closet late at night. She was about three or four at the time. Oh, my. Fucking terrifying. This is insane. Right? La mano peluda. I always feel that a lot of missing kid cases are just unfortunately family members and strangers abducting kids and doing awful things. But yeah, it's. A little bit worse to also throw in there that, you know, it's just interdimensional beings stealing kids for yeah, their own sustenance. Right? Or for something. Um, this person says, this is Rosie Apple in the responses. I've read on this sub maybe a year ago, a thread about disembodied green hands and lots of 25 plus year olds having experience with experiences with this green floating hand coming up from under their pillow or under their bed. When my neighbor was around 12, she insisted she saw a green hand in her room and it was trying to grab her from under her pillow. I've read countless experiences involving disembodied hands, so I believe you. Crazy. Um, we're going to do one more story about a green hand encounter and some uh, responses. Um, as a kid, I used to see stuff all the time. And I, this is by... OK, warning, 916, about nine months ago. As a kid, I used to see stuff all the time, and I don't know if it was just a vivid imagination or something, but I looked into it and found very little on the green hand that I saw. I was seven or eight at the time, and it was my, in my living room. Or wait, and I was in my living room, jumping on the couch, eating some candy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like a goblin. Yeah. <laughs> And I noticed Look, a piece. I, I, I bought two and a half pounds of gummy bears like three days ago. So <laughs> I understand this point, person entirely. <laughs> at a certain point, you get so full of gummy bears, you just got to jump on something. <laughs> That's um, fair. They were on sale. Yeah. I was seven or eight at the time, and I was in my living room jumping on the couch, eating some candy, and I noticed a piece laying on the ground. And not a minute later, I saw a green hand come from underneath the couch and grab it and then went back from where it came. I saw it, and I immediately jumped on another co couch and just stared intensely at it, but nothing ever happened. The second time I saw it... I was 13, was about to walk past our washing machine when I saw it come out from underneath it. I stopped dead in my tracks and just looked at it. And just as quickly as it had appeared, it went back under. Just as quick, and I haven't seen it since. Now, Very did scary. this person disclose that they have a one of those uh, old-timey hungry, hungry hippos houses? <laughs> you know, from the 40s and 50s. Yeah, where yeah. the hippos are hungry. Um. 
This says, I randomly decided to look for others who have seen a, a green hand. My experience is nothing crazy as well. When I was a child on Saturdays, when my mother was home from work, my siblings and I would clean the house after a week of destroying it. While I was in the living room by myself, wandering aimlessly, looking for things to pick up or clean. Then I looked up at the entertainment stand on top of the VCR was a poster board, but there was a green hand on top of it. And it pushed the poster board off the VCR without even thinking. I picked up the po poster because I was cleaning and at the time i was looking for something to pick up then i looked back at the vcr and the hand was gone what the fuck did i see this one says green hands i thought the one i saw was white but maybe that was just because the sun was shining on it i saw it once at a lake and went after it but it was gone before i reached it this one says what the heck? I've seen that. I've had this exact same thing happen to me, even coming from under the couch when I was around six to eight years old. I remember standing by the couch and a green hand came out from under the couch and grabbed my ankle, making me freak out. Oof. Pretty wild shit. Uh, so we'll kind of stop it there just because I could go on and on uh, about this. I, I read one that I was trying to find. I must have lost it somewhere. Um but like the, sometimes the hand looks terrifying. Sometimes it looks old. Sometimes it looks dead. One person described a hand grabbing at them that looked like a very old woman's hand with red long nails on it. Um, pretty spooky shit. So uh, that does it for my segment and probably does it for most of your sleep patterns tonight. But thank you for listening to Give Me a Hand or Don't. Please don't. <laughs> Please do not. <laughs> Nate, you yeah. next. I'll I'll wrap up the episode. Uh, yeah, sure. Wrap it up. So, uh, I don't know if you guys know this, uh, but it is it, it's it's a very important birthday week. Oh, for is it someone we know very well? Willie Nelson, Santa Claus. Possibly both of those uh, as well. Uh, the Beast of Bray Road? The Beastie Boys? They all share one birthday. It's true. They sleep in that big bed. <laughs> it's weird because one of them's dead. <laughs> uh-huh. They won't let him go. <laughs> and that's friendship. Is the, it, it's, it's definitely the uh, birth time of Ad Rock. <laughs> but he's reborn again every single day. Uh, just to... Just to throw one syllable out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's actually uh, the birth week of the Loch Ness Monster. <gasps> Whoa! Happy birthday, baby! Yeah. Happy birthday to don't, you! Don't, don't sing. It enrages the beast. <laughs> uh, yeah. As, as of this posting, uh, tomorrow will be the first time that the Loch Ness Monster was recorded uh, having been seen. Interesting. In, uh, in the uh, Inverness Courier. Mm, ah, yes. I remember it well. All Scots are born with this memory, if I'm not mm -hmm. incorrect. Truth. And here is uh, what they had to say about it. Strange spectacle on Loch Ness. Uh -huh. What was it? They also write for a chorus from a correspondent instead of a person's name. Sure. You didn't uh, get a name back then in the news business. <laughs> Loch Ness has for generations been credited with being the home of a fearsome looking monster. Mm -hmm. But somehow or other, the water Kelpie, so did not nail it. Yeah, as opposed initially. to those land Kelpies you hear about. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're horses, gonna get to that, actually. AKA. <laughs> uh, as this legendary creature is called, has always been regarded as a myth, if not a joke. Uh, now, however, comes the news that the beast has been seen once more. Here's the thing. 
they have not seen this thing. This is the first like actual recorded right sighting. Uh, so, but there's been some kind of uh, gossip, I guess, basically. Sure. About Loch Ness. Uh, for on Friday of last week, a well-known businessman who lives in Inverness and his wife, a university graduate, <laughs> nice. when, <laughs> when motoring along the north shore of the loch, not far from Aberdechan Beer, were startled to see a tremendous upheaval on the loch, which previously had been as calm as the proverbial mill pond. The lady was the first to notice the disturbance, which occurred fully three quarters a mile from the shore, and it was her sudden cries to stop that drew her husband's attention to the water. There, the creature disported itself, rolling and plunging for a fully a minute, its body resembling that of a whale, oh, and the sure. water cascading and churning like a simmering cauldron. Damn. So they really saw something. Yeah, totally. And it was Crazy. moving fast or moving hot. One of the two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Both onlookers confessed that there was something uncanny about the whole thing, for they realized that there was no ordinary denizen of the depths, because apart from its enormous size, the beast, in taking the final plunge, sent out waves that were big enough to have been caused by a passing steamer. I don't wow. know that there are very many steamers in Loch Ness. <laughs> I mean, they're not anymore, not since the monster. <laughs> uh, the watchers waited for almost half an hour in the hope that the monster, if such it was, would come to the surface again, but they had seen the last of it. Question as to the length of the beast, the lady stated that it, judging by the state of the water in the affected area, it seemed to be many feet long. This is the uh, only thing I can find when you Google waves from a steamer. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, okay. So? Uh, it will be remembered that a few years ago, a party of Inverness anglers reported that when crossing the lock in a rowing boat, they encountered an unknown creature whose bulk movements and the amount of water displaced at once suggested that it was either a very large seal, a porpoise, or indeed the monster itself. It was either a big seal or a small monster. Uh, but the story, which duly appeared in the press, received scant attention and less credence. In fact, most of those people who aired their views on the matter did so in a manner that bespoke feelings of the utmost skepticism. Mm. It should be mentioned that so far as is known, neither seals nor porpoises have ever been known to enter Loch Ness. Mm. Indeed, in the case of the latter, it would be utterly impossible for them to do so. Probably not, actually, because we now know that it does go out to yeah. see well and also what if somebody put it in there yeah <laughs> i could i could see myself doing something like that <laughs> <laughs> uh indeed in the case of the letter it would be utterly impossible to do so uh and as to the seals it is the fact that though they have on rare occasions been seen in the river ness so mm. they are around right their presence in loch ness has never been definitely established Hmm. Uh, but we know better uh, since 1933 it has been seen on a number of occasions uh, here's a, another one this is uh, from Mr. George Spicer of London nice mm -hmm. I respect uh, the Spicer the Spice Lord of London and this is, uh, again, uh, coming ashore. We're finding out. I saw the nearest approach to a dragon or prehistoric animal that I have ever seen in my life. Wow. It, it crossed my road about 50 yards ahead and appeared oh. to be carrying a small lamb or animal of some kind. What? Messy. Exactly. 
You Eskies can't be a carnivore. Feasting on the local livestock. This explains it seemed, everything. It seemed to have a long neck, which moved up and down in the manner of a scenic railway. Oh. And I don't know if I mentioned this. This is from 1933 again. Mm-hmm. So same year. Uh, if Nessie is not there, it was then. Hmm. Or or something was. Sure. Uh, tr- moved up and down in the manner of a scenic railway. It probably shouldn't be doing that outside right. of like a Six Flags. <laughs> Uh, and the body was fairly big with a high back. But if there were any feet, they must have been the web kind. And as for a tail, I cannot say, as it moved so rapidly. And when we got to the spot, it had probably disappeared into the lock. Uh, length from six feet to eight feet and very ugly. Hmm. As opposed yeah. to all those other beautiful serpentine creatures. Yeah, <laughs> yeah shots uh, fired. I am wondering if you can give me any information about it. So he's writing into the paper here. Uh, and I'm closing a stamped addressed envelope anticipating your kind reply. Whatever it is, and it may be a land and water animal, I think it should be destroyed. <laughs> Holy shit. This, this thing's a menace. Guy. What a prick. <laughs> I propose we kill and eat the beast. We've only seen the one. End it. (laughs) And it shall be mine. As I am not sure whether had I been quite so close to it, I should have cared to tackle it. (laughs) He thought he might have (laughs) Yeah, gone gone footballing over it, apparently. (laughs) A power move. It is difficult to give you a better description, as it moved so swiftly, and the whole thing was so sudden. There is no doubt it exists. Wow. Okay. So this dude, for sure, yeah, with his wife in the car, saw this thing. Uh, Later on, uh, people believe that it is a otter. Hmm. Gigantic otter. That's the thing. Some fucking otter. Eight foot tall. If it's a fucking, yeah. That would be King Otter. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I want to say episode 94. The Dobarchu. All Radar.com. King Otter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if you want to find more about that, uh, apparently carrying a young otter in its mouth. Huh. But that is not what he saw. That's not what he's saying. Uh, anyway, the, yeah, the article goes on to talk about a lot of kind of possible ancient uh, sightings, but really 1933, uh, and it's specifically May 2nd, yeah, uh, seems to be the Loch Ness Monster coming into its own, and uh, I'm calling it the Loch Ness Birthday. I think that's pretty good. Happy we birthday, are too. Nessie. Let me uh, remember that so I can make a tweet on the Loch Ness Monster's birthday. Yeah. It's, I find it very interesting that they described it like a whale rolling because people talk about this being like a serpent or, you know, an eel ball or something, but that is decidedly not like any of those things. I suppose it could be some kind of log or something twisting around in there, but... I don't know. Sounds but not convincing undulating and certainly not crossing a road. Yeah. Yes. Yes, indeed. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> and also, like it it's it's uh not as monstrous truly as or as large as some people make it out to, as he felt he could tackle it, tackle it to like keep it there. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, he's being an asshole. I right. Mean, there's no <laughs> way that you see, even if you saw an otter that was like four feet long. Right. 
why would you think you could tackle that and keep it? Yeah, totally. This because I'm like, a man and I do this, man stuff. Like I keep the monster <laughs> pinned. This feels like somebody who after the fact was like, yeah, I like I wasn't scared. I wasn't scared even a little bit. I could have I well, could have had a fight with that. It, it does, to, to be honest. <laughs> Oh, well, and also, he wasn't Scottish. He was some London asshole. I could have fought it, probably. I had my fighting knickers on and everything. Exactly. He does eventually go on to... Com- he keeps saying it's bigger and bigger. Uh, <laughs> by, the, by, like, 1955, they're still doing interviews with this guy 20-something years later. What a dick. <laughs> and, 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 yeah, he, he has increased the size of it multiple yeah. times yeah he could tackle it every story <laughs> i would have shown my wife what i could do but uh <laughs> I, I didn't want to reveal f- my mi6 situation yes i didn't <laughs> want to frighten her <laughs> uh i'll do one last thing because i think it's really funny this is a uh fake uh, interview with the monster from August 15th in 1933. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> from, from the Inverness Courier again. Hit me with that. Uh, Pleased to meet you, said Mr. Otter Serpent Dragon Plesiosaurus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Waving one of his whale light flippers. I have a soft side to the courier as it was the gentleman who writes for you from Fort Augustus who brought me out of my cavernous depths and planted me right in the public eye. He deserves a raise, I think, (laughs) or at least to have his name said in certain articles. I see they know all about me in London now, so my fortune's made. I asked Mr. O very politely if he would give some particulars about his life for the press. Certainly, said Mr. O, with alacrity, for like all the truly great, he loves to bask in the sunshine of publicity. Classic. Mr. Anyway, o. So, <laughs> happy birthday to uh, the Loch Ness Monster, and uh, here's to many more. What would that be? uh, Many happy returns, you little freak. 1933, that's 90 years? Yeah, we're almost to the day, 90 years of him first getting his press. Pretty cool. And you know what? One of the less problematic monsters out there in the media. (laughs) Never been canceled. Yeah, (laughs) They, they, they had to make up the interview. (laughs) Because <laughs> he's just so he's so, so good looking. All right. Well, I'm going to take the skull. Happy birthday, Loch Ness Monster. Take that shine felt. And yep. now I would like to speak to you both about something I found on the old cryptid winky. Uh, it wasn't me. Look, it was college. I was I needed to pay for books. No, no shame, Jordan, for I now know you were one of the Michelin men. (laughs) Hey, I almost did this. (laughs) (laughs) So if you don't know what the Michelin men are in the 1960s, a balloon type of extraterrestrial cryptid that looks like the Michelin man were reported uh, through a number of occasions throughout the world. As I said, they were dubbed the Michelin Men because they look just like the fucking Michelin Men. If you go to our YouTube, you can see what I'm sharing. And this is... Virtually stay puffed. ...of Michelin Men. Whoa. What happened to that one's leg? (laughs) Ah, uh, you know, the Michelin men still have to fight in space wars, and sometimes you have to get a foot amputated. Or yeah, diabetes. One of the two. Diabetes. So let's go into the Michelin men as we wrap up this wonderful werewolf radar. I have 
uh, some sightings in May of 1960. Antonio Rivera, a local school teacher, was at the crossroads between Arcos de la Frontera and El Bosque, both towns in uh, the province of Cadiz, Spain. Okay. Following a motorcycle or returning from a motorcycle trip when he discerned a strange human-like being about 150 meters away. That's about 500 feet Mm -hmm. on a short uphill incline of the highway that was ahead of him. He described the being as follows. He was completely red from head to foot and suddenly appeared at the edge of the highway rather tall, something about two meters having trouble walking and was walking like a mechanical doll. Ugh. Very stiff arms. Weird. After stopping his motorcycle, he saw the humanoid was walking on the edge of the road before going six steps. Another individual of similar characteristics appeared and followed him. Hmm. Like his predecessor, he appeared suddenly. The second humanoid was not so tall. He measured maybe 23 centimeters or about three to four feet. Hmm. He was also dressed in red. He had one difference with respect to his predecessor. He had a black boot. That was what we saw over there. One of them was wearing a black boot-ish like appearance. Ribera could not remember if the boot was on the left or right foot. Because he was freaking the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he certifies that he saw it like that. I think that's a translational error. Mm-hmm. The humanoids then crossed the highway at an angle, and Ribera saw the ringed outlines of the beings with the classic shape of the Michelin Man. All the rage in Spain at the time. Whoa! Remember the rage in Spain. Stays. Remember that Spanish TV show, <laughs> Michelin Man, with this, yeah, <laughs> etc. Um, that is wild. Is there a chance that this is like some kind of early, like, like guerrilla marketing, and they were like, they made some Michelin men to walk around and like. It just fucking went south. They accidentally wore the worlds to whole fucking we, nation. <laughs> we were talking about a really not obscure, but different ways of marketing before. And there's so many forms of like marketing on how marketers like get information out and make you like, I yeah. want to buy a Michelin tire. And perhaps this could have been, but I think it was very early in marketing to where I don't right. think they had that type of viral sense about oh. the news. Also, they wouldn't have just like like robots that could walk. Around. We don't we don't have that. And we're in the future. It could be a, a very stiff costume that was very unmovable. OK. And there's like a, a, a doofus inside getting a paid, doof. getting paid a, two bits an hour or something. Well, but. We have seen a, a ton of different, like, weird alien things where uh, they send some sort of bizarro robot down. Mm, it, the robots true. never look the same. They always yeah. seem to be janky in some They're way. kind of like, janked up, yeah. Yeah. I wonder if that's what our robots look like to the Martians. <laughs> no, they're the ones with the janky robots. We now, eventually are going to start sending trash to Mars. That maybe true. that's what's happening here <laughs> <laughs> so Ribera decided to get closer to the two Michelin men mm-hmm. while he debated with himself over the danger entailed in his decision so he again started up his vehicle on reaching the curve of the highway Which, to head toward the slope uh, where I'd the like humanites were located everybody is a motorcycle so he's fucking oh, cool. yeah yeah he's renegating this okay yeah, he's, he's cool. just He's going to help this community on reaching the curve in the highway to head toward the slope where the humanoids were, humanoids were located. They had disappeared in the same mysterious manner that they had appeared. Hmm. And now I have some more locations across the world. We have another location occur- occurring on the island of Reunion in hmm. the Indian Ocean. I'm sure I butchered that, but it's spelled Reunion. Sure. Reunion Island. That sounds about right. Uh, between Marat, Maritis, Maritius, Mar- Mauritius. and Madag- yeah, Mauritius and Mad- Madagascar. So, Accurate. 
that Indian Ocean, which yeah. I just now remembered Madagascar is part of the Medi- the the Indian Ocean. I guess Africa yeah. touches it too. That's a big ocean. Big I, ocean. I feel like there's a lot of space there. There's a lot of space. So uh, big the ass area ocean you got there. The area where it was where the another Michelin man was seen was La Plan de Cafres. And this was on July 31st, 1968, around 9 a.m. And it was seen by a local farmer named M. Luce Fontaine. And it goes as such. I was at the kilometer 21 mark. Already very different country. <laughs> <laughs> Already so European. Indian, sorry. I mean, just... Mauritanian? Not wet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not how we do it here in the States. All America. In, the, in a small clearing. Columna in the monstrous. In the middle of the uh, acacia trees. That mm-hmm. morning, I was bending down, picking up some grass for my rabbits, when I suddenly saw a sort of oval-shaped cabin in the clearing. It was 25 meters from me, as we discussed. That's about 75 feet. And as, and as though suspended at a height of four or five meters from the ground. The extremities of it were dark blue. The center part was lighter, more transparent, rather like a windscreen of a Pidgeot? Pugiot? I know it's a type of car. Pugiot? Pugiot. Yes. Yeah, so above and below it had what looked like two glass feet of shining metal. In the center of the cabin were two individuals with their backs towards me. Hmm. The one on the left turned right around as so to face me. He was standing small, about 90 centimeters in height. I have no idea how tall that is. About four and a half. Pretty short. Yeah, it's a, he's yeah. a shorter gentleman. This is a mini Michelin man. Okay. Uh, and enveloped from head to toe in a sort of one piece overall, a bit like a suit worn by the Michelin man. The one on the right simply turned his head around towards me, but all the same, I had to catch a glimpse of his face. I had to look which, at that thing. I had to look at it, <laughs> which was partially masked by a sort of helmet. Wild. Then both turned their backs to me, and there was a flash, of, and there was a flash as strong as the electric arc of a welding machine. Whoa! Everything went white around me. A powerful heat was given off, and then, as if it were a sort of blast of wind, and a few seconds later, there was nothing there anymore. Huh. I now, approached. Do we sp- know? That this was not Daft Punk. <laughs> There's no way to know. <laughs> it's 68, man. Daft Punk's been doing it for decades. They're like Neil, man, just banging out the tunes. Yeah. Also, every every once in a while during a Daft Punk concert, they'll disappear and appear in a different part of the time stream. <laughs> <laughs> in their Dirk Locker machine. Mm-hmm. Uh, everything went right around me. Then I approached the spot where the object had been and there were no marks the object had a diameter of about four to five meters and was about two and a half meters measured through the top to the bottom so very very not too tall of a of a craft or whatever this is right it was a bluish color uh spelled with a u (laughs) blue with white on the upper and lower parts, I told oh, my wife color. about it, and then my uh, gendarmerie, the cops, I believe, Gendarme. yeah. and everyone at once believed me. Huh. I now we now uh, go through the time slip to March fourteenth, nineteen seventy six. Vince, Vincent and Carmen Correll, a married couple, were driving along small roads of Spain in the Castel, Castellan region. Around 10 p.m., the couple found themselves noticing strange phenomenon in the night skies and reported a white oval that floated 
to the left of their car, believing at first that it might be headlights of a car on a nearby hill. The Corrells only made a few made it a few hundred feet before they believed they were driving into a luminous tornado. Whoa! As an object appeared to rise out of the ground in front of them, bathing the object with its car lights, high beams. Mr. Carell was startled to see that it was a person. They said, I suppose that it had two legs because it reminded me of a human profile. However, since the legs were so close together, it looked more like a column than a human being. The thing was tall, good looking, and wore close fitting <laughs> one piece. Okay. You know, a lot of people mistake tall for good looking. <laughs> That's they true. do as a as an average heighted person, I get mistaken for tall all the time. Also, imagine how also good do you looking. know that five nine still the average height for an American? Interesting. Disgusting. We're all above that, right? I, None of us are I, freaks. I love I love Six towering, three. apparently. <laughs> it's uh, do you know do you have any idea how good looking an alien would have to be for you to stop in the middle of a close <laughs> encounter and be like god I, damn, this thing's fucking i do i exactly. thought about it average how good looking they have to be <laughs> you know just like a normal fucking human have a little crazy. differences you know i'm into it yeah <laughs> I now have one. We're slipping through the time slip. This comes from 2015 when it was finally. Um, I'm trying to forget. I forgot the word revealed, disclosed from an anonymous source. This happened in 1971. The account goes as follows. Hello. When I was in my early teens, I witnessed something that I have never been able to explain. This occurred in northern Minnesota. And I've included a picture of what it looked like to me. I, at uh, first, I was like, it's always funny in a story when somebody introduces themselves at the top. Hi there. <laughs> and then you're like, I'm from Minnesota. And I was like, there it is. There. Yeah. <laughs> I was in the woodlot behind the barn around 9 p.m. It was in July 1971. And I was out there with my collie dog, Bonnie. Bonnie started barking and running towards the far edge of the woods. I called for her, but she continued running. I started to chase after her. As I got nearer to the small field, Bonnie was laying down towards the sky. Nope, was laying down looking towards the sky. Uh, okay. I looked in the same direction and saw a bright yellow light coming toward us. The light got brighter and larger. Bonnie barked a few more times and ran back into the woods. She was scared. Well, I was scared as well. Yeah. The lights were hovering above me. I felt paralyzed. I wanted to run, but I just couldn't move. I looked at the light and started to make out a shape. I have always said that it was a balloon man. Wow. It was round in the body and segmented with segmented legs and arms. And the so head... good looking. <laughs> <laughs> I told my missus at the time, it's you, it's, it's, it's it. Okay. You don't even have a chance. <laughs> I'm in love with this thing. Get out. You're walking. The head was a bright yellow light. I couldn't see a face, just a bright blinding light. Hmm, just like that other one. It hovered for a minute and then moved toward me. It was right in front of me. I'd say it was about eight feet tall and very wide. There was an intense heat coming from me as well. I had trouble breathing and was very uncomfortable. Hmm. When it started to hover and circle around me, I thought it was I thought I was going to pass out. Then it suddenly disappeared. As soon as Yikes. it did, I dropped to the ground and started shivering. Was I so could not mean. move, but I was so cold and felt weak and sick. I lay wow. there for a long time. So maybe uh, that's sort of like like an encounter suit, like they're putting off some kind of crazy ass radiation or something. Mm -hmm. It could be how it's floating as well. If it was like some yeah. sort of heat based. 
propulsion unit, it would be uh, burning the oxygen from the fire and that area would be harder to breathe. Plus, you would be breathing in all sorts of other fumes, causing some ill effects. Sure. Now, I heard my mom calling and then Bonnie was beside me barking. My mom was frantic and I and tried to get me to my feet. I couldn't stand. I was just too weak to move. Soon, my older brother showed up and carried me to the house. I was sick in bed for about a week, and the doctor said I had a severe reaction to poison sumac. What? <laughs> right. He says this wasn't correct, uh, but they did have sore a sore red rash on their face and arms. Huh. The balloon man burned me somehow and had weakened me. Yeah, that after I, like radiation. Very similar, or at least maybe not the yeah. radiation poison that we would know because he seems to heal without any of the adverse right. side effects, but definitely like a heat burn. Some other kind yeah. of yeah. wave. Yeah, heat Some wave shit. burn. Heat wave. After I burn recuperated, I told <laughs> After I recuperated, I told my mom what had happened. She was surprised by what I described. She knew I didn't have poison sumac. She didn't question the doctor either. I never told anyone else about my contact with the balloon man, but I told my brothers not to go into the far field at night. They just laughed. And that yeah, and, is and shoved me into the far fields, into a ditch yeah. full and of radiation. That, and that is and just sumac. And that is just the basics of the Michelin Man. I was searching for some topics, and this one was so fucking far out and bizarre. Yeah, that's crazy. I've uh, never heard anything a like that. Ton of it. Yeah, actually, I have. It 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 has shades of. You remember the sheep slayer story? Oh, yeah. barely. That was really strange too. It also has yeah. uh, has moments like the one that doesn't have too much Michelin stuff. The one from uh, Vince, Vincente and Carmen Carell. Yeah, where it was. It kind of is described as uh, what was that one photo to where there's two photos of the child and in the middle there's just like a person in a white suit. Oh. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Maybe you can link us in the Discord. I will. It's a it's a very famous alien photo that Kodak uh gave an award for. They no one claimed what? the award, but they were all like, if you can disprove how this isn't an alien photo, Kodak will give you a million dollars. Wow, now I gotta see it. <laughs> Uh, folks, on that note, join our Discord. You too can see the picture that Roger is talking about. If he see, if he finds it, in fact, and if he doesn't, I, imagine... <laughs> I will find it. It's been on alien, ancient aliens, a hundred times. <laughs> uh, if he doesn't find it, he'll give you it's some other picture. stories down in Oak Island. <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today and listening to the pod please tell your friends about us please give us five stars on itunes please 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 oh my god it's all about us no it's not it's about you guys we really appreciate you listening we really appreciate your support uh if you like what you heard today you can go to patreon.com forward slash werewolf radar you can become a patron uh you get additional podcast every week you get some merch you get some uh sweet fiction and lots of other things that we've put together for you over there on patreon.com forward slash werewolf radar you can also find us on twitch i almost said switch uh that's not what it's called come on grandpa you can find <laughs> us on twitch uh, at twitch.tv forward slash werewolf underscore radar where we play dungeons and dragons almost every monday and uh other games me and roger are consistently putting ourselves up against the sons of the forest uh they are terrifying um we're becoming stronger though i'm less scared we that's we, true. we figured out how to get unlimited ammo we got a shovel we need we got a shovel we're gonna get a shotgun soon let them try to stop us. We got you are nearly fathers of the forest. <laughs> I was exactly. going to say, we're going to soon just chop down the entire forest. The fathers are here and they say it's playtime's over. 
<laughs> Shout out to Chuck from Snappy Little Numbers for our intro and outro song. And I think that does it for another episode of Werewolf Radar. Until next time, as always, our sign off line on the count of three. One, two, three. Punch, Punch the, the sky. sky. Space Man. Space Man. I found the photo too. It's the Solway Spaceman. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs>